Welcome to Mrs. Fairbanks math class. Today we're going to be looking at graphing tangent and we're going to make our way to transformations. I am going to start by talking about the unit circle a little more in depth than I did about sine and cosine. So when we have the unit circle, and it's the unit circle because we have our radius of 1, um, when we cut that in half, we're at pi over 4, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. So with those points, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and 1 half square root of 3 over 2. This point is 0, 1. This point, well you can see it, is negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So first we're going to talk about using the unit circle to find the tangent. So I'm going to use the smallest radian, which is pi over 6, which is our 30 degree triangle. So we use the 30, 60, 90 ratio to figure that out. So in my small triangle, that is with a pi over 6 with a radius of 1, that means that my x value is root 3 over 2, my y value is 1 half, we know that my sine is 1 half, my cosine is this. When we're doing tangent, it's opposite over adjacent. So the tan of pi over 6 is 1 half over root 3 over 2, which we then multiply by the reciprocal. We get 1 over root 3, which we can rationalize to root 3 over 3. When I look at my medium triangle, and that is pi over 4 radians, can't see that pi over 4, those sides are both root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So the tangent of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, which simplifies to 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And then if we look at our tall triangle, which is our pi over 3, then we have 1 half along the x and root 3 over 2. The tangent of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 over 1 over 1 over 2. And so when you simplify that, you get root 3. So I did it small, medium, and large. And the tangent also ends up being small, medium, and large. You have the largest number for the tall triangle for the largest radian of pi over 3. Square root of 3 is bigger than the square root of 3 divided by 3. So now I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to come back to my unit circle, and I'm going to redo my unit circle just in terms of the tangent so that we can talk about that. Um, but before I do that, one more thing I want to look at is the tangent of the quadrantal angles. So we can think about that. So if we're doing tangent of 0, and if you notice, these are all y over x, y over x, y over x. This is going to be y over x. So the tangent of 0 comes from 0 over 1. That is allowed. So the tangent of 0 is 0. That means the tangent of pi is also 0. So let's look at what happens with the tangent of pi over 2. With the tangent of pi over 2, you've got 1 over 0, which we know is undefined. And I'm running out of space, but that's going to lead us to a very exciting asymptote. So the tangent graphs are going to end up having asymptotes because at some points the tangent will be undefined for our graph. So we're going to put this together on our unit circle, concentrating on our tangents.
Okay, let's use what we just talked about with the unit circle. I'm going to simplify, clear up my unit circle a little bit, and I'm only going to put the values of unit of tangent on the unit circle. So pi over 4, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. Um, our point, well, this would be 1, 0, but we're going to just be concentrating on our tangent. So we said the tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and the tangent of pi over 3 is 3. So those are the three numbers you really want to concentrate on. Remember, the tallest triangle has the largest tangent, which is pi over 3, and then pi over 6 has a third of that, so it's pi over 3, sorry, square root of 3 over 3. The tangent of the medium is the easiest with just one. So um, other things to remember, tangent of 0 is 0, tangent of pi is 0, but when we are doing the tangent of pi over 2, because it came from 1 divided by 2, our tangent is going to be undefined there and undefined at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So it means we're going to have some asymptotes with our graph. So our pair function is going to be y equals tangent x. We're going to go ahead and graph that. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Let's pull it apart. So the tangent of 0 is 0. I'm going to jump to the tangent of pi, which is also 0. The tangent of 2 pi, which is also 0. Uh, starting to look like sine a little bit. But now when we go to pi over 2, it's undefined. So we are going to have an asymptote there. And you should dot those in. They're going to help form the shape of your graph. I'm even going to go backwards. And I'm going to go to negative pi over 2 because we would have an asymptote there as well. If this is pi over 2 and I cut that in half, I'm at pi over 4. And when we said pi over 4 is x, then um, our y value is 1. So at 1, I'm going to have a point. At negative pi over 4, it's going to be negative 1. So here's an instance where the graph looks like it might be a straight line, but you're going to have to try and graph it, making it look like a curve. So you're going to come up along your asymptote, curve in, and then curve back out. And that is one cycle of a tangent. How long does that period look like? It's not as long as sine and cosine. It's not 2 pi. It's a half pi to the right and half pi to the left. So the period of a standard tangent graph is pi. The period equals pi, which means we're going to change that formula that we had for sine and cosine where it was 2 pi divided by b. And for the tangents period, it's going to be pi divided by b. So that's a little bit different. The other thing that's different from sine and cosine is we do now have the arrowheads. So our y values are going to go on forever. So our range is going to be a little bit different. And now we have the asymptotes. So we have to figure out how to write our domain so that we're not including those x values. Um, we also don't have mins and maxes. So that those are some of the differences between tangent compared to sine and cosine. When I ask you to graph sine and cosine, we are looking at five key points. When we're doing tangent, we're going to do three key points. We're going to do this point in the middle. And we'll see how this kind of amplitude is not really an amplitude, but how it will be stretched and how that number will change. Um, but let's think about the domain and range for a minute. So for the domain, well, it can be 0, can go up to pi over 2. It can keep going, and this distance is pi. Every pi after that, I am going to have an asymptote. So what we're going to say is we're going to say all real numbers except pi over 2, wherever your first asymptote is, plus the length of the period, plus pi k. And that k will then be the multiplier so that you don't have to list every asymptote. The range 
is now going to be all real numbers. So again, no min, no max. We've got the arrowheads, and this one becomes all real numbers. So the paragraph of a tangent is, is quite different from sine and cosine. The period is different. The domain is different. The range is different. And it now has asymptotes. Here we're going to graph the equation y equals 4 tangent x. We're going to look at the effects of a, b, c, and d on the graph. In this case, we've changed our a so that it is 4. Keep in mind it's not an amplitude anymore because we don't have a max and min with tangent, um, but it does still stretch our graph. So if we take a look at tangent, And we remember from part of our unit circle that we've got root 3 and 1, root 3 over, whoops, root 3 over 3, and tangent there. So um, I am still going to have my asymptotes at half pi and negative half pi. I'm just changing a, so my period is still pi. I am still going to have a point at 0, 0, because the tangent of 0 is 0 times 4 is still 0. Now when I go to pi over 4, and I plug that in, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. And that's where the stretch comes in. So when you go halfway in between your period, the half of your period, which is now a quarter, you're up at 4. You're also down at negative 4. Again, it looks like a straight line, but put a little curve in there. Follow your asymptote up and then through, and that was not that great. But there we have the graph of y equals 4 tangent of x. Let's take a look at the equation y equals tan x minus 3, no parentheses, so that negative 3 is my d value, which means my whole graph is going to be shifted down negative 3, down 3. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch my coordinate plane. I always like to use those same numbers as a reference again so we can see stretching and condensing as well. Um, I uh, haven't changed my period, it's still pi, um, so I'm going to have my asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Now I would have had a point at 0, 0, but now this graph is going to be shifted down negative 3, so I am down at negative 3. If I plug in 0, the tangent of 0 is 0, 0 minus negative 3 is negative 3, and that becomes the middle of my graph. I still have an amplitude of 1, so that means I go in between there, so I'm at pi over 4, and I'm just up 1, so I have a point right there, and then I'm at negative pi over 4, and I have a point there. And we get that shape. That is the graph of y equals tan x minus 3. Keep in mind, we would have another cycle, and it would be over here, and it would look like that. And these graphs would keep going. You would just repeat your cycle. So when I ask you to graph three points, it's three points on the same cycle. It's not the middle point, the middle point, and the middle point. Um, let's talk about the domain and range again. The domain, because I know this is a tough one. Um, it is all real numbers except for pi over 2 because that's my first asymptote. And then add your period, because our period will eventually change, so I don't want you to always think it's plus pi k, but you're going to add whatever your period is, and then the k as the multiplier to include all of your asymptotes. All right, let's look at how we would graph y equals tangent of the grouping of x minus pi over 2. We know that this is our c value. It's in our group, so that's going to shift this left or right. In this case, this is going to go to the right pi over 2. So with our coordinate plane and our radians, normally we would have a point at 0, 0 and an asymptote at pi over 2, but everything is going to get shifted to the right pi over 2. So now I'm going to have a point at pi over 2 and an asymptote at pi. 
Normally I would have had an asymptote at negative pi over 2, so that's going to shift to the right. And my y-axis, my x equals 0, is going to be an asymptote as well. I haven't changed my amplitude, so down at negative 1 and positive 1. In between those, at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, I would have another point and another point to give me my tangent curve. So if I were to ask you for your three key points, you would say pi over 2, negative 1, pi over, sorry, pi over 4, negative 1, pi over 2, 0, and 3 pi over 4, comma 1. Let's try the domain and range with this. My domain, I'm going to go to my first um, asymptote. So it's all real numbers except pi plus, we're still pi long, pi k. You could even get away with saying r, uh, all real numbers except for pi k, and that would still count the same thing. My range is all real numbers. Okay, for this one, we're going to look at y equals the tangent of 1 half x. That is our b value. I did put the parentheses in there. b would be the same. Um, but it would be different if we had a c value within the parentheses. But let's concentrate on trying to figure out our period if b is 2. So we know that the tangent period formula is now pi divided by b instead of 2 pi divided by b. So now we're looking at pi divided by 1 half, which is 2 pi. So when we graph this, we now have a longer period for tangent. Tangent of 0, we're right here. That's still going to be 0. 0 times 0 is tangent of 0, which is 0. So I do still have a point there. Um, when I do the tangent of pi, so if I plug in pi, pi times 1 half is pi over 2, and tangent of pi over 2 is now undefined. Now I have made my asymptote farther away, which then makes my period longer. So if I'm at pi over there, I'm at negative pi here. So when you're thinking about graphing tangent, and, and you haven't moved it left or right from the origin, you're going to have your point there, and then you're going to go half the distance of your period to the right and half your distance your period to the left, so that when we put that together, in this case, we're going to get a period that is 2 pi. And that's all the difference is. Um, my amplitude is still 1, so I'm going to go halfway in the middle, which now in this case is pi over 2, and I have a point there. And then at negative pi over 2, I'm over here, and it looks like it's a little bit um, horizontally stretched, and that's what's happening here. So the graph of y equals tan of 1 half x is going to make your period longer. It's 2 pi.